This is where things got so weird. <laughs> so the bride reached out and the mother of the bride is not actually the mother of the bride. She is the groom's mom. You know when you're listening to a story and it just gets stranger and stranger and then you then have to keep on pausing it because you can't quite understand what you're listening to because everything that you've ever known has just been a complete lie. This is where things get so freaking weird. And I'm not saying that our girl Melina is lying. I'm saying that there has been some recent developments in this TikTok cake baker v wedding dictator situation story extravaganza that has gone so wild. I said it went wild last time. I'm honestly, I'm at loss for words, okay? There's been some snakes in the grass is what I'm trying to get at. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please go and watch my part, my very first part of this series because I explain everything and it's too much to explain right now, so just go ahead and watch it. In an absolute nutshell, we were all under the illusion that this wedding organiser, planner, dictator had basically upcharged the bride's family and then apparently she was also meant to be keeping all the tips. A quick recap, I took desserts to a wedding, I charged the person who I thought was the bride, Miranda, $2,500 for the desserts. When I got to the wedding, the mother of the bride was there and she was very upset because she felt like they overpaid. They paid $7,500 and it turns out that Miranda was the wedding coordinator, not the bride, and they paid Miranda $7,500 for desserts that I only charged her $2,500 for. So, well, it turns out, as I'm about to explain in a minute, there was a snake in the grass. There was a snake, there was a hidden character that was plotting the downfall of Melina's day. This is an update-ish, but this is not the update. So if you want to wait for the update, just know that this is not it, but I wanted to come on here and let you guys know what's going on. So um, I received, uh, between yesterday and this morning, I received two emails, but I'm, there's just something weird going on. And I basically, what I came on here to say is that I have a phone call scheduled tonight and I have another phone call scheduled tomorrow morning because I'm trying to get the full picture of what has happened and what is happening and also I'm trying to get some kind of like proof to make sure that I don't just continue coming on here and sharing weird updates with the whole Miranda situation. Um, so that's the update is tonight uh, tomorrow, wait, yeah, tonight and tomorrow morning, I have two phone calls scheduled and hopefully between now and then I'm going to get some proof on this whole situation and I'll be able to share those updates with you guys because they are freaking weird. Um, and I will have like factual information. Hey, stop whining. We're going to go. Um, I'll have factual information and then we're just going to hopefully move on from this whole situation. Now, Melina first spoke to Miranda. Now, in my last video, we were all under the impression that Miranda was this lying, scamming, upcharging lady who was keeping everyone's tips and then also filling out everything as if she was the bride, including a bridal cookie that Melina then had to make and give to the bride, essentially. She completed all of the inquiries and all of the contracts as if she was the bride. She attended the tasting as if she was the bride. She pretended to be the bride, essentially. Well, it turns out that actually, Miranda never upcharged. Um, she actually sent an invoice. She only added on a 10% fee, which is apparently very, very standard if you are, you know, in the business. You tend to charge an additional 10% for your own services. So Miranda emailed me back, and when she emailed me back, she also sent me a copy of the invoice that she sent the bride and groom. So Miranda, essentially, this is what happened. She did not charge the bride and groom. She did not upcharge them $5,000, nor did she ever receive a $500 tip she says, from the bride and groom that was supposed to come to me or to any of the other vendors. And she did not upcharge them $5,000. She upcharged them about 10%, which as, as I'm to understand is the industry standard. She also explains to Melina that she was very inexperienced. It was her very first huge gig and she didn't know what to do. So she essentially lied and pretended that she was the bride. She didn't actually do the tasting. She went and collected the tasting and then gave it to the bride. But Miranda and the bride did actually do the tasting together, but she just felt so in inexperienced and she didn't know what she was doing that she didn't want to ask anyone and make herself look 
you know, foolish by asking in front of the bride or Melina, you know, what do I do? How do I fill this in? So she basically just, you know, faked it till she made it. This business, this was her first client ever. She acknowledged that she shouldn't have taken the client on because this was a really large wedding and a really large undertaking and she was very inexperienced. She acknowledged that she shouldn't have taken the client on and her and I also spoke about the way that she filled my contracts out, the way that she filled my inquiries out and stuff like that because I told her that it was dishonest and she said it wasn't necessarily that she was being dishonest she was just unsure of how to do things and she didn't want to ask or seem inexperienced because she really wanted the client and she really wanted the order so instead of reaching out to me or instead of speaking to the bride about any of this she thought that it would be best to just fill out all the contracts and all the inquiries as if she was the bride herself because she really wanted the order and she was very inexperienced she said she felt like people wouldn't book services with her if she said that she was a coordinator or that the couple wouldn't want to go with her if she had like asked vendors questions on whether or not she could be herself. Now, listening to Melina explain this, I can I understand it a bit more. OK, I think the cookie thing is absolutely bonkers. And I just, I know, I know, and I said this in my last video, that she is going to be cringing about that. She is going to be so embarrassed. It's going to be one of those things that's going to keep her up at night for a very long time. Okay, she's going to be deeply embarrassed about that whole putting her and her partner's face on a cookie that is then be given to the bride incident, okay? I did bring up the bridal gift to her and she apologized profusely and she said that again she just attributed it to her inexperience in the industry i also asked her about the cake tasting and she said she filled the cake tasting out as if it was her own and she was the one who picked it up which i knew because i put two and two together um but she did take it to the bride and groom and they did the tasting but she did send an invoice she did send an invoice she sent over the copy of it to melina and no she did not upcharge you know five thousand dollars she didn't do that that was never in her invoice it was only the ten percent but who could be lying so if it's not miranda that's upcharging and okay you can kind of excuse the fact that you know maybe she shouldn't have filled it out as if she was the bride it was a bit dumb it was a bit stupid you know i'm trying to look past that but she didn't upcharge who would be lying so I never heard back from the mother of the bride as I hoped that I wouldn't, but I did hear from the bride. This is the first contact I've had with the bride. I had no idea who the bride was. I was never given any of her information. I had no way to contact her. I didn't even know her name. Um, so this was the first contact I had with her. She saw my TikTok videos and she did reach out to me via email and I also had a phone call with her. And this is where things got so weird so the bride reached out and the mother of the bride is not actually the mother of the bride she is the groom's mom so it is the bride's mother-in-law the bride's mom is actually deceased she passed away prior to the wedding yeah you heard that right the lady who melina went and spoke to was not even the bride's mum. it was the groom's mum. the bride's mum has been deceased she's she's deceased how rough is that and you know she has a history the groom's mum psycho mum has a history of lying and basically targeted melina because she was by herself she wasn't really contracted and she did everything through miranda lied to melina's face said that she was upcharged by a load of money um complained about the cakes said that she was actually said that she was the bride's mum introduced her introduced herself like that even though she's not she's the groom's mum sent that email that scathing email and the repercussion of her crappy ways is that now a load of people have been told that Miranda is up to no good even though supposedly it was just her very first gig and she was just extremely in inexperienced but it sounded like she did a good job otherwise she actually you know she put she put the wedding together she just messed up a little bit um but like now everyone's gonna think that Miranda is just some useless person who needs to be blacklisted in the industry because she's upcharging loads of money because of something that the groom's mum was saying it honestly it's wild to me i asked the bride if she could send me like any 
if there was any like picture proof that she felt comfortable providing me with and she did send me the invoice that Miranda sent her and it was the same invoice that Miranda sent me so Miranda was telling the truth about how much she upcharged them which was the standard 10% is my understanding that it's the industry standard and the bride felt okay with it the bride also told me that she did do the tasting with Miranda, just as Miranda had said. And the bride sent me some pictures of the her mother-in-law, um, and it was the woman that spoke to me at the venue. This woman is not a lawyer. She's not an attorney. She's not even in that field at all. Yeah. The mother-in-law didn't pay for any of the services, so... Miranda paid for my services. Miranda paid for, as I understand it, Miranda paid for all of the vendor services and she invoiced the bride and groom and the bride and groom paid Miranda. So the mother-in-law did not give any vendors $500 tips. She didn't provide, she didn't pay for anything. I mean, this has just got to be the most, one of the most wildest stories I've ever heard. So they're not even lawyers and they didn't pay for anything and they're picking on melina poor 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 melina over there getting picked on by this psycho mother-in-law you know there's obviously that you know like preconception sometimes people being like oh you know like mother-in-law's a little bit psycho but this mother-in-law is really taking the cake why did no one warn her because the bride says that you know she has a pattern of lying um the bride said that she is notorious for being a liar and a lot of the situation that the mother of the bride presented to me was indeed fabricated. I am just so confused as to how she was able to not only frame Miranda but then also frame Melina as well because at the end of the day she would have been framing the wedding coordinator to accuse her of upcharging but to go through all of that effort of then going back home, logging onto your computer, and then typing out a ferocious email to Melina, pretending that you're lawyers and that you're going to take legal counsel, when none of it is true. None of it is true. It's honestly baffling as to how anyone would ever lie about something like this. I did ask the bride why I specifically was like targeted or why if any of the other vendors experiences with the mother of the bride and she said she didn't know but she feels like I was just an easy target because I was there at the venue alone setting the desserts up and nobody was really near me to hear what she was saying and that kind of thing like it was just kind of a perfect storm I didn't have anyone else's information like the brides the grooms because Miranda filled everything out for herself um I didn't know like I didn't have anyone else's contact information and so she said she just feels like it was this like perfect storm or the mom or the mother-in-law could approach me could express that she was unhappy could lie about who she was and then I ended up asking for her contact information so that I could reach out to her as any vendor would do if their client was unhappy and just another point as well is that she was also lying about the fact that Miranda did actually stay on the premises there was never a clause uh, in the agreement or anything like that there was nothing in their contracts that were saying you know you need to stay there all day because you know if miranda wasn't available miranda was there the bride said that miranda was helping her with some things so basically everything that the groom's mom was saying was just was just a lie basically it was just a huge fabrication i would urge any of you guys to go over and watch those tiktoks in their entirety because i did break them down quite a lot like I say, this has been a massive uh, turn of events, but I do believe that she's going to be over there answering questions. The Miranda was just an alias. It wasn't her actual name. So at the end of the day, it is good storytelling, especially on Melina's part. And Miranda, you know, Miranda's identity has been saved. And she wasn't, ma I mean, she was a little bit at fault, but let's be real. Who was the real super villain in all of this? I hope you guys enjoyed that little update. Go over to her TikTok. Hope you guys have a wonderful day wherever you are in this world. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. And I will catch up with you guys in the next video.